measures, bar lines and double bar lines. Music is divided into equal parts called measures. Bar lines indicate the beginning and end of measures. These lines here are bar lines. So the spaces here, here and here are called measures. So the distance between two bar lines actually there there is a bar line here this distance, this distance and this distance is called a measure. The double bar line, one thin line and one thick line show the end of a piece. Time signatures are placed at the beginning of a piece of music. They contain two numbers and we see them here. The numbers show the number of beats or counts in each measure, which is this number here above, and the kind of note that receives one beat, and that's the bottom note. So I repeat, the top number shows the number of beats or counts in each measure. The bottom number shows what kind of note gets one beat. Now keeping this in mind, we can see that this time signature means four quarter notes, that is how many of what kind and here we have four and the kind is fourth notes or what we call quarter notes so we can see that we have one two three four quarter notes then we have a bar line and when we have the bar line we have one measure and then we start again one, two, three, four. We have four quarter notes, so we have one measure here, and then we have a bar line. And in the last measure, we have again four quarter notes and the double bar line, which comes at the end of a musical piece. So let's listen to this. We hear four quarter notes in each measure. What I'm going to do now is that I'm going to count the beats along with the music. So you can hear where the beats fall into place. Let's go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You get the idea? Good. But what happens when we have different notes inside the measures? In the previous example we had quarter notes and remember that this means that there are four quarter notes in each measure and the measures are divided by bar lines so let's listen to this example for a moment and hear how it sounds now remember that the time signature tells us that there are four quarter notes in each measure. So 
the half note takes two counts of quarter notes. So when we play the music, we can count along, and then when we count along, we count the quarter notes. So I'm going to count the quarter notes now, and you'll hear how each half note ends up on three, and then one, and then three, and then one, and then three. Let's take a listen. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now a good example to understand this is to go back to our old friend the metronome and listen to the music with the metronome counting the four quarter notes. Let's take a listen. You get the idea? The metronome is really doing the same thing that I was doing. It's just counting four beats to each measure. Now what happens when we have a whole note? We've seen examples of using half notes and quarter notes. Well, the same system applies. We have four beats to the measure and uh, a whole note equals four quarter notes and two half notes so it takes up the space for a whole bar. Then we have a bar line and then we have the second bar. So listen, let's listen to this and uh, I'll have the metronome going and the metronome is really counting one, two, three, four and you can count along as we listen to this example. You get the idea? I know you do. Now let's talk a little bit about the different appearance of these notes. All these notes here represent the same pitch. That is to say the same note, the note F. The reason why the notes look different is their duration. This has the longest duration, and this is the half of duration of this, and so on. This is the half duration of a half note, and the eighth note is half a duration of a quarter note. Let's take a listen and have our old friend the metronome clicking in the back. As you could hear, it was the same note all over again. This was an F, this is an F, and so on. But let's take a little closer look at the difference of these notes. The whole note is like an egg on the side, and it has no stem going up or down. The half note has no coloring inside the note, it's not filled up, and it has a stem going up and it also can go down. We'll talk about that a little later on. The quarter note is filled. The head is filled and it has a stem also. Now the eighth note has also a filled note, note head but it has a flag going up here. You can see all these guys have flags. The sixteenth note has a filled note head and stem going up with two flags, as we talked about earlier. Now, the stems don't always go up. Now, I've selected all the notes and I will be moving them upwards. You will hear how the pitch changes. All right, this looks all the same. We go up. We are on the second space, and when we come to the third line, watch what happens. Oops! 
the stems all turn down and they come from the left side of the note head. Do you notice? Remember when they are moving up, they come from the right side of the note head. But on the third line, and you must remember this, on the third line, they start pointing down from the left side of the note head. And it doesn't rem really matter if it's a quarter note or it's an eighth note or a sixteenth note. From now on, they all go down. So this is the principle of note writing, and it doesn't matter if you're in treble clef or bass clef. This rule applies. The stems for half notes and quarter notes, eighth notes and sixteenth notes, go up if the notes are below the third line. Here's the third line. See, it turns around. Stems going up are always attached to the right of the note head. This is always the case. Stems going down are attached to the left side of the note head. Finally, let's talk in this lesson a little bit about the flags of the eight notes. Usually, when we have music like this here, we will use a different type to group these notes together. Now, these are all called flags, as you can remember, but these are called beams. In instrumental music, this is more widely used, but in vocal music uh, sometimes we will use more of the flags. But later on we'll get more into that. Now here we see the eight notes and the sixteen notes with beams. The same principle applies to the beams as to the flags. On the eight notes we have one beam. Now, if we want to use a beam on the sixteen notes, we use two beams, just as we used two flags for the sixteen notes and one flag for the eighth note. You get the idea? Good.